Okay, welcome back. This is Jamal again. Uh, if you recall, uh, a couple weeks ago, we showed you the details on the rear subframes. Uh, we uh, have a customer who's ordered, basically, he's building a Mini from scratch. He got the body shell, he's getting the uh, rear and front subframes pre-assembled, ready to bolt into the shell. This is a 76 and later, this is a Mark IV on subframe. They had rubber mounts up here, rubber mounts up here in the front. They were attempting to sort of isolate a lot of the buzzing and road noise and engine vibration from the car. And it was pretty successful. Uh, these worked pretty good. The earlier cars are noticeably harsher. In this case, we're taking the late subframe and we're going to assemble it as stock. 76 to 96 would have been pretty much this basic setup, the right size brakes, all of those. Let's go over to this side here first because this side's been pre-assembled with the stock components. We have the standard known as the 8.4 inch disc brakes. These will only accept 12 or 13 inch wheels. You take a 10 inch wheel, clunk, and you're going to hit the caliper body. It's of course very popular with the minis to keep the 10 inch wheels. You can build one of these subframes and install the early Cooper S disc brakes on the same spindle if that's what you want to do to run the small wheels. And we even have a kit that lets you take these big brakes off, put the smaller calipers, smaller rotors, fairly minimal number of parts to change. You can run the small wheels. This side here, fully assembled, upper lower ball joints. It's got the new disc brake CV joint. We've got the rubber brake hose. We're going to add the metal. SPA 44 is the part that got, kind of goes around the subframe to the left front wheel, as it'll turn out to be. We have a chance to assemble the other side. Let's go over here and kind of look at our, our setup with the two of them. This has the rubber cones. This has the stock cast trumpet piece. On the other side, we have a set of coil springs. We have some of the adjustable trumpets known as the Hilo style adjusters. We'll go ahead and assemble those to the frame just as a demonstration of how that style of spring would go together. It's kind of a nice chance to show the differences. The rubber cones, the standard rubber cone type dry springs, will take a spring compressor on the front. There simply isn't room in here without a compressor pushing these springs, uh, making them shorter so you have room to put the trumpet in and then engage the upper arm. The upper arm here uses roller bearings. It's pretty stout, very stout upper A-arm setup. Let's go take a look at the other side. This side has basically bare subframe. We haven't installed anything because we want to show a couple of options. We have here a set of the coil springs, which are quite popular because they're very easy to install. They're less expensive than the rubber springs. They allow, it, I think, an improvement in ride. They're less progressive. These rubber cones tend to tighten up enormously as you approach a, a compacted state. Um, in fact, on the rear, they don't even use a bump stop because these are just, they're only gonna go so far. So the minis notoriously have that compression where it gets harder and harder until you hit almost a, a really hard stop. The springs tend to give a more consistent deflection without a lot of increasing progressive rate spring like this. Guys that are racers, our owner Don Racine, having some great success here in recent years. He prefers the competition version of these. You know, they get used to the way the car pitches and slides. The minis are really, if you watch race video, you can see a lot of four wheel drifts, a lot of race guys tend to use the hard version. A lot of street guys, we're not really hammering our cars too much. My own car, I run the springs, it sets so low that if I put two people in it, we're gonna bottom out. If you look at the stock trumpet, we can see that the height difference here, the way it would sit in the spring, it's about an inch. And you go, well, that's not very, it's a vast amount. The way the mini suspension is, is set up, a small amount of movement, very close to the fulcrum. Here's the fulcrum. Here's where the upper arm pivots. Here's where the joint knuckle comes down. You're an inch and a half or so from the fulcrum on this side, which means any amount you would just hear is gonna translate into a much larger amount at the wheel. So when you have these adjustable high lows, I mean, a couple of turns of this makes a very noticeable difference to the ride height of the car. For installation purposes, we're gonna turn everything all the way down. These springs just set up in place. The dry type subframes have sort of a collar that's designed to tightly engage the rubber spring. In this case, the coil spring fits a little more loosely inside that collar. You have a little bit of side-to-side -side movement, but for the most part, they locate themselves within reason. We can see that the lower arm already has the plastic cup joint knuckle, ball joint below that supports the suspension. You can see that if we can hold these up in place, fairly straightforward to slip it into place, engage the joint knuckle, and now you can see that we could actually install the shaft. We even need to drop it a little bit. The rubber spring, we're going to have to have the spring compressor on here to draw it up with the longer trumpet. will be about an inch too low. 
to put this in without compressing the spring. In this case, we're putting this stock like it came off the factory assembly line. So we've got the dry suspension. Uh, we are going to use a spring compressor, which I've got here. We'll see how I do this with, uh, with one hand. I might, might need an assistant to hold that, but I think I can make it work. Um, I've actually had people call me and tell me that there's a defect that the spring doesn't fit into the frame. And yeah, they don't go in that way. If you have the arm in place, some people say you can finagle them. I've never found a way that lets you take these out with the lower arm in place. But putting them in, you turn them sideways and then the cavity up there is larger. Uh, obviously when they go in, the large side goes up against the collar inside the subframe. And here's the threaded end. We're going to reach in and grab that threaded end and compress the spring that way, as though with weight from the car. I'm just going to put it in, apply a tiny bit of twist there. We've got our spring compressor tool, and I'll just mention real quick, these are usually provided with two lower studs. You can see how these go together. There's a two-piece thing here. This is for the more common, later metric style. If you have any of these rubber cones that are made 80s onward, they're going to be a metric. I think it's a 10 or 11 millimeter, probably 11 millimeter, 1.5. So it's slightly bigger than the, I think they're 7 16 20. But if you get one that doesn't go in, it's the earlier type or the later type. You just figure out which one's which. We'll hold it in place with one hand. We'll apply the spring compressor down the middle. And I should be able to start it into the thread of the spring, which is at the bottom. And so we'll thread it in there. Make sure we have it all the way through. That feels like it would be. This just sits on top. There's a big thick collar in here, so no big deal. And then essentially it just gives you something to hold. So now as we tighten this up, if we could see this in fast motion, we can see that we've got the, uh, the compressor tool threaded through the spring. And now as we turn this collar here while holding that, it's going to end up tightening up that spring into the subframe, giving us the room to install the trumpet and eventually the upper arm. And so we can see we've already had some effect on it. Let's take a look at how much room we're going to need. There's our trumpet. You know, it's pretty close. We just need a few more turns and we'll compress that spring. If you're doing this in the car, you don't really have to worry about all this because obviously the weight of the car is going to help you. You have room to crank on these and put leverage to them. When the whole subframe is sitting on milk crates like this, obviously we have to be a bit more careful that we don't just pry it off of here. So essentially a channel lock, a large channel lock to grab the tool here and just a, next, a piece of pipe. You can see that we are tightening up the spring compressor and therefore shortening the spring. So now our trumpet installed to the joint knuckle and with our arm having the seals sort of slipped on so that we can back them out over the thrust washers. We can see now that we can pretty well set stuff in there. Reach through to the trumpet, engage the bottom collar of our spring and as everything fits into place, the height, of course, allows the arm to install in its position. Let's see if we can convince our shaft. And sometimes these bearings can be tight. This one here is a pretty tight bearing. So that's pretty good. Everything went into place. The only thing I left out, again, trying to make sure this would go through the, the bearings, is we want our thrust washer on this side. So let me back it out just a tiny bit here with our punch. But at least we know our spring is compressed enough. So here's our inner thrust washer. Again, it has a cutout for grease or oil. That's going to face in to provide a nice smooth pivot point. I'm going to slip it onto the shaft. Be able to... All right, so the thrust washer is mostly in, but we're having a little... This is what you run into when you just want to go have a beer and think about it. We sort of muscled this thing to tighten up the spring compressor, but usually if you have this in the car, no issue at all. The car's not going to turn out from under you as you're tightening up the compressor. But we hung on to it. We got some leverage. We've compressed the rubber cone spring. And you know, I can confirm right here that if you're using new rubber cones, you will need a spring compressor. I do have the pin with its thrust washers in place. I have it lined up over here where I can basically 
knock it through and have the thread come out this other end. We've lined up the trumpet. The spring is still compressed up into the subframe. This arm has a little bit of movement as we go to line up our joint knuckle. At some point, with weight on the car, we would want to install our rebound buffer down here. And that kind of sets a limit for the droop of the front suspension. We may well have to actually crank that a bit more to lift it into place. Alternatively, we could, if this was my car, I'd probably wait until I got it in the car, put some weight on it, and then this is really a no-brainer to install because with weight on the car, this arm's going to be lifted up, giving us plenty of room here. So now the upper arm's in place with all of its pieces. We can kind of finagle them now that they're in. We can push that seal over the thrust washer so that it does its proper job. We can tighten up this upper arm reasonably. I'm just going to give it a little bit of tightness to make sure that when I position the seals here, they don't have any chance of slipping. That pretty much positions that upper arm, and you can see it's immensely strong. I really, the upper ball joint on the Mini is extremely stout and secure.